Communications Technologies is a Canadian-based Internet of Things tech company and provider of digital smart labels. And so to explain a little more about the company and some of the recent developments, John Ricci, the CEO of Danovation. Welcome, John. Good to see you again. Happy New Year. Thanks, Jane. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. <laughs> so Happy I winter. Yes, yes, um, here in Canada, so <laughs> you definitely know that. Um, tell me about this recent partnership with Uno Retail. So who is Uno Retail? Why does this make sense for Danovation? Um, Uno Retail is a company I've dealt with for about 15 years with the Martinez brothers who were in um, Edelex and Edemex, and they're big in, in branding. They work in retail. They've been doing it forever. They have a labeling company. They do all kinds of things like Coke bottle labels and wine labels, et cetera, et cetera. But they do a large, lot, lot of large format printing. But they're a staple in, in Mexico uh, for retail. They rebranded part of the business, thus the name Uno Retail. And Uno Retail works with these same retailers. And they're more of a tech play, similar to how Innovation came from Dana Industries to be a tech play company. And they had interest in the Mexican market, who had some first generation technology, but we're very happy with um, our first foray into the Mexican market with Impulsora through Uno, which is um, a techie retailer. Um, and it, and it's, um, it's good for us. And they liked our technology. They liked our, our value proposition. They like how easy it was to work with us. And we like the fact that we have um, uh, a presence in Mexico with a very good company. Mexican markets is, is very large. And for us, it represents, um, you know, an, a, you know, a, a future into another country and another marketplace. So we're, we're very happy to be there. And we've since there's another project that when it works with them, uh, um, uh, put a proposal into um, a big retailer that's um, contacted them, who then contacted us. So we're working on another, uh, probably a bigger project with them. So we're very, very happy with what's happening with that partnership and that happened pretty quick and it's um, resulted in some good business for us. So explain exactly what you would do with them. Um, the same thing we would do with anybody. So we're supplying our DSLs, digital smart labels, our hardware and our software, we're integrating with their customer. So they're the go-between. They're looking after the install and some of the tech um, part of the, of, the, of the install. And it's just a synergy partner for us. I found that it's, if you're going to go into new markets, you need to, you need to, in my opinion, work with local businesses in those markets. Mm -hmm. They've got the trust and credibility and respect. They know, they know how things work right. and there's no one better than working with Alain Martinez, for mm -hmm. example, uh, a, a gentleman like that, who's got a lot of trust and credibility and respect in the marketplace. And, and he knows the Mexican market. So it just, it just made perfect sense for us to do that. So um, they're the leads. We support him for whatever he needs. We give it to him. So we're very, very happy with this. And again, it certainly makes sense to have a partner. I mean, it shortens the learning curve and they can kind of hold your hand till you figure out how everything works locally. Well, yeah, and uh, on a related note, on the other side of the continent, we have um, a synergy partner in Bermuda, Smith Technologies, who's just done their first install. I think it was a week ago. Similar circumstances. Smith's a very good company. They're a techie company. They're using us. We go in with them, and they have the customer base, and they know the local markets and the culture and everything else, and we're just happy to, to support them in any way that we can. And we're very happy, like... Uh, Uno that they chose to be partners with Danovation. So it, it you know, shows that we're doing something right. If we could, you know, it's one thing to get your own market, but if we can um, capture markets outside of, uh, of our own country, then we're doing something right. And, yeah. and they trust us, they like us. So we're, we're happy with that one. So we're happy where that's going. So um, tell me about the new digital smart blade. What is that? So digital smart blade is just a larger format of our digital smart labels coming in 10, 11, 12, 13 inch sides, two-sided um, instruction. It will allow with our, with our software portal, a retailer to get automatic brand updates from branding uh, their brands. So if you can put a program together, you can imagine you have 10 or 20 of these blades in each of your stores. You could automate the, the updates and advertising at the flick of a switch. So in 30 seconds, you can go from, and I'm not going to mention names, but you can go from 
ABC promos to XYZ promo. And you can keep doing it. You know, you can sell brand space for days. You can sell it on weekends. You can put a whole calendar together for the whole year and sell peak times, which will be uh, a little bit more expensive, but it's used primarily for the retail as a revenue generating tool, which they love. It's sustainable because no one's going in anymore and replacing paper blades or, or plastic and taking them on and off. So we're saving the labor, you're saving the quick turnover. But what this allows you to do is react to a market condition. It could be a weather pattern. We got slammed with a snowstorm on Monday, which was one of our unprecedented snowstorms of the year, one of our first big hit blizzards. It allows you if, you, if you had these in your stores and the brand wants to advertise, you can do it right away because you're just flipping your switch and you can send that messaging out whatever, in a minute. So, um, so you can allows do you to a or, or something like that. Like if you put yeah. anything, right. I mean, yeah. automating pricing, automating information, automating branding promo, you can do anything you want. You can automate it and it doesn't have to be planned anymore. As long as you buy the airtime, you can do anything you want with it. Providing, of course, the retailers approving the content, um, but you could have it on a you could have it on a schedule. So you can just run consecutive promos, and for the retailer, he can just sell brand space to, you know, ABC Company, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at twelve one a.m. Monday morning. Somebody else's pro, uh, promos or program takes over till Thursday or whatever whatever you want to do, and they're generating revenue. And brands have you know, a lot of money and they advertise a lot and it's a nice clean design it fits on the shelf very nicely two-sided and we can get phenomenal graphics on it so we're really really happy with that development well and that kind of fits into your whole mission as a company is to reduce paper waste to have digital labels um i guess explain explain that to me like the mission of the company and how much do you think you know you'll be able to make an impact in that area um so with our system, we preach three wins. And the first one is the sustainability factor, um, labor operational efficiencies. We are removing paper from stores. You put digital smart labels on your shelf, there's no more paper, there's no more reprints, perfect paper, stickies, handwritten signs, those are gone. In fact, in our initiative, anyone that digitizes with us, we then do a, a donation to a local tree planting, um, company and we plant x number of trees on the behalf of a specific install we put a certificate in, in in place so we like our green initiative and we like being clean and fresh and lowering our carbon footprint as everybody should be doing this day and age the second win is the consumer and uh, customer engagement features that we're building into our system allows a customer allows the retailer to talk to the customers and have the customer the consumer engage the product on the shelf QR codes, RFID, NFC, putting putting product reviews, you know, if it's in a liquor store, wine reviews, um, the sweetness scale, things like that. And then the third win is is the um, gen, uh, the uh, using it a system as as a revenue generating tool, as I as I mentioned with the smart plate. So, you know, we preach wins along the way. Our whole system is not just updating pricing with a label and replacing paper. You know, it's not about replacing people. Two things are happening with the system. Yeah, we're reducing labor, we're eliminating labor, but we're eliminating that tedious labor that is error prone, things get missed. Mm. You have to hold people show up, you have to have a team doing it. And this day and age, one of the issues facing a lot of, of companies and retailers specifically is a shortage of staff. Oh, yeah. You You're still true. need to have a pricing strategy in your stores. What are you going to do if that team doesn't show up? Or if there's a storm, or you just can't find people to work, you still like need to be COVID. <laughs> which is COVID, right? but, yeah, which is what we deal with here. I'm positive tests, people can't work. <laughs> well, well, there is right, and there's cost uncertainty. I mean, supply chain. There's you know, you're, we're reading every day. The fruits and vegetables are going up. Meats, short supplies, supply chains, <laughs> freights increase, containers coming over. So you, you don't have like years ago, you can, you know, you can rely on some stable pricing for your ketchup or your paper towels, et cetera, et cetera. And nowadays just fluctuating costs that the retailers have to then, you know, capture their margins. They're in business to make money and retailers don't make a lot of money. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, they work on small margin. They sell volume. So it's not like they're buying something for 10 cents and selling it for $3. I mean, I know right. people have a, a false idea of, of, of how the retail world works. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are times when retailers can get more justifiable margin for their product, but a lot of times they're going to put prices on put items on sale. You know, how many times have you gone to a store? We match competitors pricing. Mm-hmm. We honor competitors coupons. So they're already doing it. They're trying to capture, they're trying to be competitive, but a system like this will make them more competitive. And then addressing the labor, you know, imagine going to a grocery store and I've told this to a couple of our customers and they like it. You know, people go grocery shopping, they walk in and yeah, other than there's whatever, 10 aisles and you're kind of on your own, right? You kind of know the, you know the store, but what if you, what if you are in a special food group category? What if you're a diabetic or celiac, or you're a gluten-free diet, or you're just on a low sodium, or you just, you know, you could be a vegetarian, pescatarian by choice, a vegan, and you're just looking for foods that, you know, you want to change your lifestyle, you, you're going to a healthier lifestyle, sometimes it's by choice, sometimes it's your, your, your health is dictated what you have to eat now. So what happens, what if you'd be able to go to a store and there's food experts and there's, you know, now that people have time to help you shop, Mm-hmm. Because they're not spending all their time, you know, removing the expired products and right, you know, right. inventory and stuff. And the system is doing this for you, and your system's pricing, and and now you have some customer service that a lot of stores lack. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, you know, so, 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 so we so we try to so we're looking overall. We're looking at the whole system. It's not just we're going to come in and get rid of your labor force. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not that black and white and our system represents a lot of savings of course but it also represents ways that retailers can save money by cutting their their error rates their food loss um in the store it's not having to discount the product because i go to the cash and it's 4.99 but it was 4.19 on the shelf oh sorry well the price is wrong the price on your online is different than the price in the store oh sorry that happens all the time. There's yeah. you know, food loss. Food loss is eight to twelve percent where, where where food gets thrown out and you know, perishables is you know, the milk fridges. You go to a store and you and there's a person that's gotta walk around a store all day looking for expired items. And right. then God help the, the associate in the in the store mm-hmm. if by accident a customer finds something that's expired. And some people just like to go to town on that and just make a big point. You know, you know, sorry, sir, it was a mistake. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. You forgot to get that off the floor. And the manager. <laughs> just, day, right? <laughs> oh man, I've worked retail. This, this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time. I'm sure, now I've seen it. Um, well, that's interesting. So um, not just like the, the paper waste issue, but just an overall better experience. It sounds like for yeah. the shopper and then also the, the worker. Um, instead yeah. of kind of this menial you know task, they're actually going to be engaged with customers and you know maybe doing some something a little more intellectual so very well yeah maybe it's a better job maybe somebody out of college university is in special food or something that maybe there's a more of a relevant job for them Mm. um in the grocery maybe the grocery industry is going to be able to hire you know better qualified or you know higher educated people and that makes them better better places And, and it's a competitive world and now it's about experience for shoppers it's generational. I mean, some people need to be wild when you walk in. So digital is cool and fresh and it shows that you're progressive. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to think about things like this because, you know, don't take for granted the people that come in your stores are going to be coming in every single day. You need to find ways of keeping them engaged and you want them to come back like a restaurant. It's easy to get me to go to a restaurant once, uh-huh. maybe twice, mm-hmm. but you want me to be a regular because regular customers is the core of your business success. Yeah, you want to have regular customers coming into your stores and using your store as a place to shop of choice. Very and interesting. Sometimes you need to have that. So I, I wanted to ask you about this um, expansion that you have with the Ace Hardware store or stores in Indiana, which is my yeah. home state. So right. I really wanted to bring that out. So is that kind of along these lines, like a, a customer service thing, or how does it work? Um, we got a Ace. We started working with True Value. Mm-hmm. Um, very good company, really, really exceptional people. I mean, and even the ACE, and the ACE, you know, they see ACE do, they see True Value do it. So they reached out. Um, I have my son, Jonathan, who handles operations and sales. He handles the account. So 
We're extremely happy to be associated with Ace Hardware right now. And we're starting with them in Indiana in that store. And we look forward to, you know, digitizing more of their stores. And it's one of these, hopefully it's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. One store and then somebody, another franchise owner comes in and sees that store and, hey, I want to do that too. And, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, a solid, solid North American well-known banner that's got good history and, you know, and they chose us and we're really, really, hmm. we're really, really proud of the fact that we're working with them and, and, uh, and uh, you know, that's part of what we want to, you know, we want to be doing, we want to, we want to start, you know, getting the bigger accounts and, and showing their presence as a truly North American based founded hmm. here company. Um, where we got our, our roots over here and we started here and uh, we give everyone a home field advantage who works with us. And, you know, we, we take that tongue in cheek. We, you know, I, I put a lot of importance into that. Mm -hmm. I, people ask to call me, I'll answer the phone. So I'll, I'll go out there if I have to. So we're not, <laughs> that we're it's not, hard work, but it pays off, right? It's hard. I don't it's know hard. what it is, but I mean, we have, we have, we have core values and we have, we treat our customers with the utmost respect and we appreciate whether you have one store in your chain or potential for a thousand stores, mm -hmm. you know, customers are customer to us and you get the same attention, the phone rings, we work with you. We solve pain points. We're not, we're not a, a one dimensional company. You may come to us with, um, uh, opportunity to, to digitize store and replace paper, but there's other things you, you want to do. And we're a software company. We can solve a lot of different problems for you and we can help you that way as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, John, great to get an update on Danovation. Um, sounds like you've got a lot of exciting things happen since the last time we talked. So thanks very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it.